Pommy. Yeah, the boys. The fuck was that, mate? Oh, I mean, a bit, I hate to say it. I've been saying it all year, year that Teague has zero clue. And we said it in the previews, didn't we, that we're going to see a lot about what Teague is about this week. He's going to have to change it up. He's going to have to adapt and... I mean, playing men behind the ball to give them space to do short kicks. We knew that in the scouting report, they spend 30% of their time through the corridor, allowing that to happen tactically. Then we go back and we see that there, there was no tactical change to the fourth. The fact that these boys evidently in the last three weeks have improved somewhere, but as we kept saying, they're playing shit sides. So you can't really read into playing shit sides. And you came against the side today that was just well-structured and they pulled us apart. Like, you could have had Harry Mackay there and nothing would have changed. Like, the reality of it is, is that we're just not a very good side. And when they're, when they're set up like that, the problem is, is we've got to work so hard. And when the boys aren't working so hard, like you saw today, you see the, the evidence of what we are. And that is just a very poor drilled side with very little to no clue of what's going on. With very little football management, with very little football IQ, with very little plan of how an opposition works. And that's what it is. And the simple facts are that it doesn't matter who's head, it doesn't matter who's in charge of the club, who's chairman. If you've got a coach like this who hasn't got a scooby, you ain't gonna win. So, I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, we come off last week, obviously, um, an emotional week, passing of a legend and whatnot. And you, we saw, I mean, we were pretty poor for three quarters, to be fair. And they lifted and found something in the, in the fourth. And, and then you start, I mean, I, I start thinking maybe there's a little bit of a pulse within them. And all right, in the second half, first half today, I, I mean, I think there was, I think it was four goals, two twenty-six to North Melbourne, just from defensive transition. And I thought, okay, if we can just clean that up, but the way that they, like, what, what did they, what were they told at half time? What the fuck happened? What? Well, I mean, what? nothing. You, you actually saw that the kick started to get deeper, long, like long, with a team that's smaller. You see. The, the blueprint of how to play with a smaller back line, you see, look at 2017 Richmond. Do you know what I mean? They, they, they wrote the book of how to play with a smaller line. Carlton didn't even attempt to do that. That was the least handball chains we've ever had this week. And our small side was smaller, do you know what I mean, than it's ever been this year. I mean, I, I said it at the start of the game and I'll stand by it. You'll learn a lot about T. And you learn a fuckload about T. And it's okay. Like, saying last week, we got up and about. Did we? We got up and about because we had a rivalry with Swoop Luke. It was a passionate game. But they didn't play well. We played on heart. Steve Silvani passed away. It happened. I mean, Serge Silvani passed away. Things like that happen. We said, though, that they've got to find where that what they believed. That was a side today that brought Cripper back because... We had to. He kicked three good goals, yeah, but his movement, his running patterns were woeful. This team's nowhere near it. This the the, the, the team's nowhere near it. David David T. God bless him, whether you like him or not. The guy can he coach, and that's fair enough. He got out coached today by a coach with even less experience than David T. They knew how we played. They prepared for it. We either went into this game with arrogance of how we play or arrogance of where we were as a club, and they simply picked us apart. That is 18th has just outplayed us. Territorially, structurally, it was too easy for them. And we, we said in the in the scouting report, they're a counter-attack team. That They wanted us to go forward because they knew they could hurt us. Absolute appalling performance. Appalling it performance. It was. It really was, mate. It was... I... Uh... I was frustrated at, at halftime, but I sort of said, don't do what you did last week because, you know, they win the game and you don't enjoy it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> like, what do we do from here? 
because there's a school of thought that the season was dead and all of that. We were never making finals. No worries. Fair enough. But the reality was going into the game, we are one game out of the top eight. Um, Essendon are in the eight going into the round. Um, the season's well and truly alive mathematically. And to fuck it up against North today like that, and it, who, who do I think I am saying it like that? Like North, full credit to North. But where, where are these boys at? in their development. Where, where are they at? They can't back I it think, up. Where I, are we at? I think, you, I think what you saw today was a team that sets themselves up to play to their strengths versus a team that sets itself up to play to its coach's belief, not the player's benefit, the player's, the player's skill sets. When the, when the boys play their game style and the game style is quick and it's been moved by hand and been run onto, you start to see a side that plays pretty well because that's what these guys are good. When you're asking them to attempt kicks, you're going to make mistakes because this side isn't a very good kicking side. And it's the nature of the beast. I mean, case in point, what North do very well, and we covered it in the scouting report, was that they look to get goal assists because they know their team's weakness. Yeah, And that is kicking at certain angles. Carlton go for the set shot in a position that you know that they can't kick it. Because there's no movement ahead of the ball because people are happy to leave it to other people. Last week, we saw a huge improvement because JSOS kicked that goal and there was an emotion factor to it. The facts are that these team, this, this side isn't fired up. They, like you said it yourself, a game out of finals. How the fuck are we a game out of finals? We don't deserve to be there. We're there because the rest of the AFL is evidently imploding. Is absolutely imploding. And we're somehow in the eight. Do you know what I mean? We're somehow around the eight. And they had a chance where literally, by the grace of God, they we are a game outside of the finals. And you saw what happened last year, didn't you, against Adelaide? They they didn't show up. And this week, they didn't show up. Do you know what I mean? I, I said it a couple of weeks ago. I think Harry sometimes masks a lot of our problems. And you saw that today because they kicked as if Cripps bets was Harry and he can take marks in four people. The facts are that not many people can do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're inside 50 count, the way Larky played, with, you know, these dummy runs. We were talking about the dummy runs. Cowan fell for that hot line and sinker. Do you know what I mean? Hot line and sinker. Like, if we go back and look at that scout report, which took me a week to do, Cowan have had fucking a whole year to prepare for this. And you tell me Jacob Weirin didn't know that, and you say that Plowman didn't know that, and you tell me that Jones didn't know how they structure their inside 50s? Mate, Poor. like, honestly... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you say. David T can't coach. Can't yeah. coach. Yeah. And if if you're unprepared, you're gonna see it. An old coach once used to say to me, We'll learn a lot about you, Dan, when you're under a bit of pressure. You learn a lot about this side when they're under a bit of pressure, that they're not motivated, they're not prepared, they have no idea. They have no idea because they have no belief in the system. So if they have no belief in the system, they don't have belief in anything. They don't have belief in anything. It's okay getting up for surge. But in real life, you can't have a legend die every week. You have to find that from in here. And belief, confidence starts with knowing your system and knowing you can be okay. And the facts are they don't believe in the system. They don't believe in anything. When you hear yeah. Patrick Cripp say he loves Teague, he loves Teague because he's that boss. That he's. I, I used the analogy on the live today. You, everyone has that mate, don't they, whose dad was a complete dickhead who let you drink at 13, let you smoke a bit of green out the back because he was one of the boys. You didn't respect him, though. You thought he was an idiot. You didn't respect him. You respected your dad because he would bollock you and he wanted a standard. And that's what these boys have got at the moment. They've got a coach that is... He's, he's likable because he doesn't ask for too much. They need a coach like Clarkson, who is horrible and demands standards. And eventually you learn to love him because you realize he gives you that next extra 10%. This club is a joke. The team is a joke. Year six of a rebuild has lost to a side that is starting their rebuild. Not good enough. Yeah. Well said, mate. Great stuff today. Um, we'll chat a little bit more later. See you all next week. Thank you for those who stuck by me. I was honestly at death's door. But at the end, I love you all. We're in this together. Harry Krishna.